I have been working on Coptic stitch journals. In this video, I'm just going to share how I've been creating the covers. The stitching is being done in a separate video, and I will link that in the end screen and in the description below. My name is Peg, my channel, Two Old Crows. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I like to experiment. I'm learning in the mixed media genre, so if you want to join me, hit that subscribe button, and of course the notification bell will let you know when I upload additional content. This particular cover is going to be done on rice paper, and I am starting with a parchment cover colored paint. I'm laying a thin coat onto the gel press, and I'm going to pull that with this piece of rice paper, which I will link the rice paper in the description below as well. I'm going to get two pulls off of the gel press and this one is going to pull up some of the remnants that have been on my gel press from previous print sessions and I and I like the way that looks so I'm going with it. So I'm going to try to pull some of those remnants up on that first one and just get a little bit of grunge on both of those. Now I am coming back with a vintage tea stain, Distress Oxide Spray ink and I just sprayed that on the gel press to age it, give it more, give the cover more of that distress look. And now for a bit of shimmer, a very thin coat of gold and I'll lightly press the rice paper onto the press and there. I kind of like the color combination that that gives. The parchment is very neutral, very subtle. And the gold just adds that bit of shimmer. Now to make the cover pop, I'm using some red iron oxide paint. And I'm pulling in a stencil. And I'm just going to stencil that design right on the front with this red paint. I'm just dabbing with a cosmetic sponge. And when I stencil, I get my sponge just slightly um, covered with paint. If you put too much on, it bleeds underneath the stencil, so you have to, you know, kind of go sparingly. You can always go over it a, a few times if you don't think that you received heavy enough coverage. So that pretty much completes that cover, and let's just go ahead and finish it, and then we'll print the next two covers. So to finish, I am utilizing a yes paste. Now, there's a couple of things that I've been using for the covers. The substrate. I either have chipboard that I have purchased and cut to size, or I am utilizing, I like the backs of the watercolor pads. They're a real nice um, consistency and have that rigid type feel to them. Of course, I've used lots of other things. I've cut up my K-Cup coffee boxes, I've used Amazon packaging, there's all kinds of things that you can utilize, cereal boxes, etc. But for my purpose, I like the chipboard or the back of those watercolor pads just because of the rigidity that they possess. So I am spreading the Yes paste onto the chipboard and just laying down the rice paper on top of that and I'm going to let that dry a bit and then we'll come back and fold it. So let's move on to the next covers. Parchment once again. I get gold for my second on this one. And 
And I'm going to add a bit of design by utilizing that stencil. And that puts a lot of gold shimmer onto that cover. This gold was laid down just a, a little bit thicker on the press. And there you have the start of the second background. Some Distress Oxide Spray. I want to dull that up a bit and move that stencil into the background. I, I don't really want that glaring stencil look there. And I'm happier with that. I'm just spraying the Distress Oxide on. And picking it up with the rice paper. And I'm really grunging this up. Now I'm spraying directly on to the rice paper. I'm going to speed up the drying with my heat gun a bit. And we'll get this one ready. Okay, so we have four covers ready to go drying. And let's get the third. Four covers, meaning two books, front, back, front, back. The third one is also starting with the parchment. There's our start. A little bit of gold. And I just want to touch so I'm kind of randomly putting that on with the brayer. Now some vintage tea stain. So I'm using the same, essentially the same process on all three of these. I'm starting with the same consistent three colors. I'm using the parchment, the vintage tea stain, and the gold on each. But you can see how they, you know, each one looks a little bit different. I got a little bit too much of this tea stain down, so I'm mopping it up a bit before I put the paper down, and I really... I'm happy with the way this one is turning out. Well, I like I like them all, but there's some that tend to be my favorite. So let's crunch it up just a bit more. I'm gonna brayer that tea stain and bring in some bubble wrap. And go once again. Just a little, mopping up just a little bit with a dry baby wipe. And 
in there. I'm, I, I like the way that bubble wrap added the interest, more of that distressed look into the page. And I have some ink. It's just a, a regular ink. And I'm going to attempt to do some acemic writing across this cover with the ink dropper. And it's actually working pretty well. And I'll link the Distress Ink as well in the description. And I'm using a sepia color. And it's Dr. Martin's ink, I believe is the name of it, but I'll link it below. There. I like the way that looks. So let's do it on the back or the, the second. I don't know whether it'll be the front or the back until we get to that point, but let's just go ahead and do this once again and let that ink fade into the rice paper. And you'll see how it looks dark. It, it um, kind of pulls itself down into that paper and it lightens up. So now I'm gluing the cover down. I use the Yes Paste to get the front down and I've picked up the glitter glue to glue the flaps down. Either will work. You don't have to have a couple of different types of glue. You can use what you have. So there are my covers all glued down and ready to go. I've already stenciled on the one, but I would like to move forward and stencil on the other two as well. So let's choose a stencil for this one. The more gold colored book. And I thought about this floral. And then I found this feather. And I think I shall use the feather. But I don't want to use more than one. I just want one feather. So I'm taping off the other two to avoid any bleed through of that second stencil or the second and the third feather so there now I'm going to cock eye that just a little bit twist it a little bit I'm just going to tape that down to avoid it shifting on me And I have some raw umber that I will be utilizing. I'm just tapping that through the stencil with my cosmetic sponge. It looks like we got decent coverage, so I'm going to pull that out. I think it looks just a little barren here. Um, I'm going to cover that up again and just come back over the top of it with the raw umber. I just thought it looked so desolate 
on there. So I'm going to create the background with a raw umber and then come back with a gold feather. And let's see if that doesn't look a bit better. There, I'm much happier with that. And now I'll just dab around the outside edge of that raw umber background with a little bit of gold so it kind of fades into, into a gold. And I am much happier with that. So this is the type of book that we're going to bind, this Coptic Stitch Journal. And now we have two covers completed, front and back. And let's move on to the third with just a simple stencil. I think this is one of my favorite stencils came from Stencil Girl Products. And there you have the final covers. And to prepare the end sheets, I am just cutting to this inside size and I'm utilizing plain text weight paper. We'll pull the gel press back out and we'll go with the same color scenario. We'll start with the parchment. Come back with a bit of raw umber to darken them, them up a bit with some bubble wrap. And I'm creating all the covers, all the end sheets at once, and I will try to get each end sheet kind of specifically colored for the book that it's going inside. So some I'm putting a heavier brown, others light. And we'll match them up to the books here in a second. So of course we want some gold. And pulled out a just a comb to add a little bit of texture to that gold on the end sheets. And the tea stain. I'm going to go directly on the end sheet. Get more gold. If you remember, we had the one book that was pretty heavy gold. And just a touch of red for that book with the red cover. And when it, just a touch of the red oxide on, on those in sheets. I think I'm ready to match them up and glue them down. I'm just utilizing my crocodile to round those corners with the quarter inch round. And we'll just glue those down. So there's the feather. 
These are the end sheets for the Asimic writing book. I'll get those glued into place. And for the final step, we'll glue in the end sheets for the final book. With that bit of red in it. And there you go. And I think it's interesting how utilizing the same three colors on each book gave us a complete different look for each one. This is the one with the asymmetric writing and that um, raw umber stencil. And then you move into the same three colors with the red oxide. I'll bind that with the red thread. And I think that's going to look good. Here are the end sheets for that one. And then you have the feather with the raw umber and the gold. And the end sheets for this one. So I hope you enjoyed. Here are some other places you can find me along the web. And I thank you very much for stopping by and joining me. Please subscribe. The like button does help promote my channel. And of course, the comments I enjoy. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you if you've already subscribed. And if you haven't, I hope you'll join me. Bye for now.